Ezekiel chapter 32 verse 17 and it came to pass after the 12th year the 15th day of the month so we already have a date at the beginning of this chapter um, it was the 12th year the 12th month the first day so it's still the 12th month it's been 14 days. Son of man, whale, I mean, we've been seeing woe and lamentation, whale, bitter outcry for the multitude of Egypt. Now we're still in Egypt. Egypt's been a couple chapters. We're in the chapters of God judging the nation. No nation is going to go unpunished. There will be nations that will be that will be judged by God and individuals. It says that there will be groups of people, sheep, at the end of the tribulation when Jesus Christ comes back. And he says it will be the, <clears throat> the, the nations that help the Jews. Israel, corporate, is the nation above all nations. And some would think it's, a, it's America. Egypt is a nation that God kept telling his people, don't go back. Egypt is a type of the world. And cast them down, even her. And the daughters of fa famous nations. And the daughters of nations would be, America is the daughter of England. Because out of England came America. Of the famous nations. Unto the neither or nether parts of the earth. Alright. Which them that go down into the pit. And we're going to learn that this pit is hell. Whom does whom does thou pass in beauty? Remember what we read about before earlier with beauty and Satan. We're looking at nations, but we're also looking at Satan. Go down. And be thou laid with the uncircumcised Gentiles. They shall fall in the midst of them that are slain by the sword. War. She is delivered to the sword. Draw her and all her multitudes. The strong among the mighty shall speak to him out of the midst of hell with them that help him. I mean, when you get the NIV, which some places will say out of the grave, that's a Jehovah Witness teaching that hell is the grave. Hell is not the grave because particularly most of every body, I mean fl flesh, the, the body, nose, hands, feet, outside of cremation, and outside of, of a, like a shipwreck, most people are going to end up in the grave. They took John the Baptist and they buried him. They buried Steve. What did they do? Bury them in hell? I would assume that Paul was buried and maybe Mary was buried and Peter were buried in hell. Are you thinking about the doctrines of the heresies and the occults? If hell is the grave, then Paul and Mary and Peter are in hell today. It's not so. Particularly, most people will go into a grave. Like I said, even some that are cremated, they'll, they'll be they'll put into a grave. For some, the sea is their grave. But from the grave, some go to heaven, and the rest go to hell. With them that help him. 
They are gone down, they lie uncircumcised, slain by the sword. Asher, Assyria, is there. That's another nation. And all her company. His graves. See, there's a difference between graves and hell. But if you pick up the modern versions and you pick the New World Translate, they will make it the same. And they're not the same. One particular way is they're not the same is they spelt different. You will get more points if you put the word graves on the Scrabble board than you will with hell. The graves are about him. A cemetery. A graveyard. All of them slain, fallen by the sword. War. Whose graves are set in the size of the pit. These are people who died, they were buried, they went into hell. And her company round about her grave. A whole bunch of people. And all of them slain. <laughs> And the thing I can think about is Arlington National Cemetery. It is full of slain men in the military. Okay? All the bodies in Arlington Cemetery are in a grave. But not all the souls are in hell. There are people in Arlington Cemetery, they're in heaven by Jesus Christ. Or they are in hell by rejecting Jesus. But you can't say everybody that is in Arlington National Cemetery are in hell, but the Jehovah Witnesses, by what they're teaching, are teaching particularly so. The Tomb of the Unknown Soldier by the Jehovah Witnesses and the NIV Bible said that tomb is hell. No, it's not. It's a grave. And if, if the man of the unknown, the, the unknown soldier in that tomb, if he rejected Jesus Christ, he's in hell today. If he had believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, he is in heaven today. While his body is in a tomb, while their bodies are in a grave. There is Elon, another, another uh, city, country. And all her multitude round about her grave. You know, all the Nazis of World War II, I would figure by now, have died and been buried or whatever they do. All the people who survived and all the people who were on the Titanic have now died and are put in their graves. But being in their graves, they're not in hell, Jehovah Witnesses, NIV. If they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, they're going to heaven. They didn't go to hell. And are gone down uncircumcised into the neither parts of the earth. See where hell is? It's a pit. It's in the neither. It's under your feet. Which caused the terror in the land of the living. These people, Elon, they were fierce. They were strong. They have no mercy. And if Elon would come knock on your door and say, listen, we're, we're, we're going to have a battle with you, you'd be shaking in your boots. Yet they born their shame with them that go down to the pit. So in hell, we learn Jesus about the rich man. There's torment. We read now in hell, there's people shame inside the earth. Their souls are inside hell in the earth. Their body is in a grave somewhere. Those that rejected God's way of salvation. They have set her a bed in the midst of the slain with all her multitude. Her graves are round about him. All of them uncircumcised. He's talking about the Gentiles. Slain by the sword. War. This is all by war. Through their terror is caused in the land of living. Yet they have borne their shame in them that go down to the pit. He, put, he is put in the midst of them that be slain. <clears throat> there are people who went to war. They fought for their country. 
they, they, they gave their time for their country, and if they disobeyed God's way of salvation, whatever dispensation they were in, they died, They bar their bodies were buried in a, in a tomb or a grave, their soul went into hell. There's Meshach, Tubal, another country, and all her multitude. Her graves are round about him. All of them uncircumcised. So, you know, see, it's over and over. Listen, there's no country that can Okay, you get off the hook, America. Because in God we trust and there's one nation under God. No, 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 no. If you reject God and his plan of salvation, Jesus Christ, and his word, you will end up in the same hell as Babylon. You will go into the same hell as Egypt. You will go into the same hell as Meshach Tubal. And when you further study the Bible, there's actually different degrees in hell. We're not come to that point yet. Her graves round about him. All of them uncircumcised, slain by the sword. Look, it's repeated, it's repeated, it's repeated. It's the same hell. There is no room for purgatory. Because there is no purgatory. Though they caused their terror in the land of the... So they may have been mighty thieves, fierce. Warriors and military on the earth. Not so in hell. That rich man was in hell. He had no riches in hell. When he died, his riches stayed behind. And the pharaohs proved that. You know, he with the most toys in the end wins. Not for Pharaoh, because all his toys are in museums. They had been robbed by grave robbers. <laughs> and he could have been the strongest Pharaoh, but it didn't do him no good when they came and robbed his graves. They shall not lie with the mighty that are fallen and uncircumcised which go down to hell with their weapons of war. I don't, I don't want to stretch that, but with their weapons? All right, did their weapons of war kill them and that brought them to hell? There's a place in the Bible where the earth opened up Swallow the inhabitants and their tents and their life, everything. They had laid their swords under their heads. But their iniquity shall be upon their bones. They have not been redeemed by God. They are not been watched by God. Though they were the terror, the mighty, the land of the though you were not fierce. Though Goliath was a fierce giant and feared by Israel, the day that David slain him through, through God guiding that rock into his forehead, when he fell flat and dead on the earth, his body was on the earth, and his soul is in hell still today. You might have been a great terror on this earth, but they're not fearing you in hell. They're not fearing him. In fact, in hell, Goliath doesn't even have a name. Yea, though thou, though thou shalt be broken in the midst of the uncircumcised, you're broken in hell, and shalt lie with them that are slain with the sword. There is Edom, that's Esau, the brother of Jacob, her kings. So don't go up there, you know, I was a president, I was a queen, I was a king. I was an ambassador, I was the pastor, I was the CEO, I was the top of the ladder of all the ladders, I was the top, and without the blood of Jesus Christ, you're in hell. I don't care who you are, I don't care what you are. If any president of the United States never put his faith and trust in the gospel of Jesus Christ, that president dead today, body in the ground, his soul is in hell. I don't care what president he was. And any president or ex-president that's living today and they die without Jesus Christ, their body will be buried, you will have an extravagant funeral, but their soul is in hell. 
And they won't care if you're a U.S. president. They won't care if you are a general. They wouldn't care what you are in hell. And all her princes, which with their might they laid by them that were slain by the sword, they're in the same place. They shall lie with the uncircumcised. The only thing you got as human beings in hell is the Gentiles uncircumcised. And the Jews that were circumcised are in hell too. Imagine the Jews who hate Gentiles rejecting God, Jehovah, and ended up in a place where they hate the people. With them that go down to the pit. The pit is that fall in to a place called hell. It's never called Shiloh. I read somewhere today, I wish I found that note again where I, where I read it. Shiloh, I read today, is like demons. And I didn't know this. See, demon, you shouldn't use the word demons because in Greek mythology, which I studied in school, there are good demons and there are bad demons. Okay? In the Bible, devils are never good. So they're not demons. And I learned today, and I wish, I wish I'm going to try to find that. Shiloh is like devils and demons. I forget which group of people. I think it said the Assyrians, but don't quote me on that. There was a good place for Shiloh, and there was a bad place for Shiloh. Gee, I wonder where the Catholics get their teaching for purgatory. And in the Bible, you either go to heaven by God's way, or you go to hell rejecting God. There's no other way. There is no other way. There be the princes of the north, all of them, all the Zidonians. I believe that's, that's the city where Jezebel's from, I think. Zidon. Which are gone down with the slain. With their terror, they are ashamed of their might. Oh, we got strong, we got muscles, I can lift iron, I can pump, I can... Uh. No one can conquer me. I'm the best. I'm the top. And you die without Jesus Christ. You end up in hell. I wish I had believed. There are good people in hell. And there are terrible people in hell. There are all kinds of people. But there are people who rejected God in his word. There's no fame in hell. There's no status in hell. You are ashamed in hell. Verse 30, there be the princes of the north and all the men of Zidon, which are gone down slain in their terror. They are ashamed of their might and they lie uncircumcised with them that are slain by the sword and bear their shame with them that go down to the You know, there is shame in hell. I am ashamed I'm in this place. And the rich man said, will you go tell my brothers not to come? This is a shameful place. It is so shameful, Jesus Christ left his throne in glory and was born in the manger. Yes, he was, not in December 25th. And he went all the way to the cross and died and was buried and arose again the third day according to Scripture to see you at the right hand. He says, I have come to seek that which is lost. Hell is so terrible, God left his throne to suffer and die for us. Pharaoh, now watch this. Pharaoh, will type of Satan. Pharaoh shall see them in hell and shall be comforted over all his mother. You know what gives Satan comfort? When all the great white throne ju judgment is finished, the last soul has been cast into the lake of fire, Satan will look at everybody in the lake of fire and say, Satisfied. Only if I got the rest of them. Satan would say, only if I conquered Israel to Israel's complete annihilation, where Israel's completely wiped off the map, which he won't do it. Satan will get comfort by those screaming 
and being torments. In the hell that Jesus said, hell was made for Satan and his angels. Your suffering in hell pleases Satan. And he won't have a party and he won't have booze. Even Pharaoh and all his army slain by the sword, saith the Lord God. His own people, will be, his own fallen angels will be there. I'm glad you guys are with me. Enjoy the torment. For I have caused my terror in the land of the living, God. And he shall be laid in the midst of the circumcised Pharaoh. Same thing. Satan gets the same lake of fire all the souls that rejected God in his way of salvation. I don't know who the first man died that went to hell. The only thing is, he's been in hell longer than a man that died yesterday and is in hell. And they will be judged of the great white throne judgment, and they will go off all eternity in the lake of fire, and Satan says, <laughs> God, you didn't get these. You may have souls that are going off to New Jerusalem. You may have Jews off to the New Earth. You may have Gentiles in the New Heavens, but you didn't get them. I got them. That is what pleases Satan. If Job would have gave up and Job would throw the towel in, if Job would have cursed God and said, that's it, I'm done, I give up, Satan would have been pleased. Satan was more pleased with Job's wife than he was with Job. Don't please Satan. Because what pleases him is going to hurt you. And it will hurt you for all eternity. we will say, what, what if I'm saved? All right, if you please Satan as a Christian, you won't lose your soul, but you'll lose gold, silver, precious stone, crowns, and inheritance. How would you like to be walking in New Jerusalem and have no crowns? Because you please Satan. And there are Christians that do that. They're saved. But they love the pleasures of sin for the season. Even Pharaoh and all his multitude, saith the Lord God. This entire chapter is about death. It's about hell. It's about Satan. I say today, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and you won't please Satan. He'll be quite angry.